Welcome back to Sportsline, everybody. As promised, we're going to switch gears, talk a little college football. We bring in one of the best college football experts in the area, our good friend Doug Matthews from 104.5 The Zone, former UT assistant coach, the host of Sports Saturday on Saturday mornings and Big Orange Sunday on Sunday mornings. Coach, great to have you on. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. John, you bet. Glad to, glad to be on. Well, uh, college football is well underway. The first full weekend in the books, and what a wild weekend it was. I don't even know where to start. I, we're going to get to uh, Tennessee and Vanderbilt and the rest of the SEC in just a second, but i got to ask you about what's going on at Texas A&M right now. We all saw what happened on Sunday at UCLA, a 34-point lead. And then they blow it. The Bruins score 35 unanswered points in the final 17 minutes to somehow get out of there with a win. What do you think that loss means for Texas A&M and their embattled head coach, Kevin Sumlin? Well, it, it was a seriously bad loss. You mentioned Kevin Sumlin. He's the one head football coach out there. I think this is his sixth year now. Uh, but he's the one coach who uh, his athletic director essentially said, hey, you know, we're evaluating you this year and roughly got to, got to win, got to, got to win some more more games than you have been. Uh, had that one in great position. You know, you just watch it. I don't care whether you're a fan or a coach or former player or, or former Aggie, whatever. You just say, how in the world – kind of game that was going so one-sided one way. Rosen didn't have time to hardly go back and set his feet, much less throw a pass, just completely flip around. Mm. And it's like uh, what happens in, in most ball games. You, whether you intentionally take your foot off the gas pedal, maybe mentally you do. You looked at that ball game, John, the secondary had a couple of chances to make interceptions, any any one of which would have entered the, uh, into the ball game. Uh, but they didn't, and you have to listen Listen, you, you, you have to give uh, you have to give UCLA a lot of credit too. You know, Jim Mora uh, and and Kevin Sumlin are much in the same position. I sure. think both of them, if they don't have good years, probably will be replaced at the end of the year. That's just an amazing game to watch and to to see A and M. Uh, blow that lead the way they did. Yes, yeah, certainly uh, if Kevin Sumlin wasn't on the hot seat, it is white hot right now. All right, Coach, uh, then Monday night we have another exciting game and another comeback. Tennessee, a program obviously you're very familiar with. Uh, look for all the world like they were dead in the water against Georgia Tech. They run for over 500 yards. They're just, they can't tackle anybody. They can't stop anybody. And all of a sudden, Quentin Dormady able to settle down and they're able to make some plays and, and, and get into the end zone. The defense gets a couple of stops, some key turnovers late. What a comeback by Tennessee and maybe perhaps another embattled coach, Butch Jones. He really needed that win, didn't he? He did. Uh, you know, I uh, I don't know exactly. New, new athletic director John Curry, where where that stands right now. Uh, Coach Jones has done, I think, a good job the four years he's been there. He took over a, a mess, and uh, Tennessee is now essentially a regular season eight and four team right now. I think they had the potential to do better of that. But you know, John, that was a great example. When you hear coaches and people talk about uh, that, really follow football field position and turnovers and all that, that was a great example of that. Uh, there were two turnovers in the game. Both of them were Georgia Tech, and Tennessee turned both those turnovers into 14 points. Mm. Tennessee only had two penalties in the game. Uh, they didn't have any sacks, uh, and uh, they, they punted the ball and covered real well, and it was a game where uh, really the, kind of the basics of football really – kind of came paid off there at the end and Tennessee I don't know that they stopped I'm saying this a little tongue in cheek <laughs> but I don't know that they stopped uh, a three or a two or three yard gain uh, all night long but they did <laughs> on the play that counted and it was uh, that was a big win to come back like that that adds when you when you play so poorly on defense I thought they played well on offense or fairly well for a new quarterback but when you play so poorly uh, on one side of the ball and win the ball game, that's that's the best way to teach. You can go in now a lot easier to teach and make corrections after a win than it is after a loss. We're talking with the coach, Doug Matthews, former assistant at Tennessee, and now you can hear him every weekend morning on 104.5 The Zone, Sports Saturday on Saturday, Big Orange Sunday on Sunday. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the quarterback, Quentin Dormady, coach, making his first uh, uh 
start obviously a little shaky to start off but he seemed to settle down and he finally found some receivers that could make some plays for him he did uh, all young by the way mm -hmm. every uh, receiver i believe that caught a pass other than jennings who's now out for the year uh, every wide receiver uh, is either a freshman or sophomore uh, we saw marquez callaway I think step in to show the potential. He's a, he's a star of the future, or and the future probably for him is right now a little <laughs> quicker than maybe they thought. Uh, Dormady, you know, if, uh, John, if you just look at his stats, if you didn't know who, what game you were talking about, he was 20 for 37, uh, threw a couple of passes in in the coverage you probably shouldn't, didn't have any turnovers, uh, had four or five pretty easy catches that were dropped. Uh, rushed for a couple of uh, times for f seven and six yards. And all in all, I think he played a really good first game. Got better as the game went on. And mm -hmm. I think the coaches really feel really good about where he is right now. He's, he's not a runner like Joshua Dobbs. I'm sure they're going to have a package and have a package for for uh, uh, Garantano, Jared Garantano, that we'll probably see this week. But uh, I was impressed uh, with the with the first game of Dormley. As I said, he he uh, he. As the game went on, he got better and better, and took him on a 93-yard drive in under four minutes to win a ball game. That's, that doesn't happen very often, and he. Uh, I thought he did a fine job in that. Coach, what about Vanderbilt? Uh, they go into Middle Tennessee State, an impressive 28-6 to win. And when you look at what Middle tried to do defensively, I know that uh, they've got the new defensive coordinator now uh, and Coach Schaefer, and I really thought his game plan was solid. Basically, he was saying, we're not going to let Ralph Webb uh, wreck the game for us. We're going to see if Kyle Shermer can beat us. The only problem for them was Kyle Shermer beat them. A really solid game. Looks like the, the way he played late last season has carried over so far into this year. Well, you kind of put your finger on what uh, Vanderbilt's going to need to do on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, people are going to, you know, you can stop the passing game or the running game, one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard to stop both if you're pretty balanced. And the best news for Vanderbilt is that Shermer, not only did he play well, he looked very comfortable. Now, certainly they're going to play defenses that will put more pressure on them than, uh, Mississippi, than uh, MTSU did. Uh, but the, the strength of that team, and it's really been the strength of the team since uh, uh, since Coach uh, moved over, Mason moved over to the defense coordinator, has been their defensive side of the ball. They they play very solid, very sound. If they don't uh, if they don't cough the ball up on offense, and if they can have decent field position, this is going to be a good football. They were a good football team last year. I think they'll be better. They you know they're 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 still searching. I think a little bit at the linebacker position, but. Uh, all in all, they got good depth. They got good players. They play a really solid football. And uh, as you said, uh, if, if Shermer looks to have that type of ability, that that I think he can probably be the best Vanderbilt quarterback in maybe 15 years, decade, 15 years. They don't, they're not going to ask him to run, right? Uh, but they're going to. He can he can throw the ball, and they've uh, they've, they've they've done a good job of that. I. They, they were a, I think, a really fine football team last year. I, I think they have an opportunity to be every bit as good as this year. Now, as we know in this league, you know, you go back and look at Vanderbilt. I think they had six of their eight Southeastern Conference games were decided by uh, right around seven points or less, eight, mm -hmm. nine, seven, eight points or less. They won, uh, they won some of those and lost some, but that means they're in every single ball game. That's what you're looking for. Coach, around the SEC, you had Florida taking on Michigan uh, in Texas in the opener, and obviously the Gators were missing several key players due to suspension. Hung with the Wolverines for a while, had back-to-back -back pick sixes, but uh, uh, it's, it's obvious the Gators have some work to do if they're going to stand up to a team like Michigan, right? Well, I think they had 10 guys suspended, but only three of those guys, one a receiver and two running backs. I don't think it would have made much difference uh, if they'd have had those three there. Uh, Michigan just completely dominated the line of scrimmage both sides. Uh, 
really, and especially the second half, Florida didn't even come close to scoring. They started the young quarterback, Felipe Franks. I was a little surprised they pulled him simply because if you're going to start a freshman uh, over, uh, and they had two experienced quarterbacks there, if you're going to start one, normally you let him say, hey, this is our guy, we're going to ride with him. And, of course, when Zaire came in, he he uh, he. he fumbled a couple times. The last one was for a touchdown. But Florida's, uh, Florida's in some trouble, I think. I, I don't... Uh, uh, they're probably still going to be very good on defense. Really good. But, boy, it, it's hard to see... It's hard to see how they're going to be anything better than average on offense. Now, unless Michigan is the greatest all-time defensive team <laughs> in America. <laughs> and Michigan looked awfully good. I, I was very impressed. I I was wanting to see, you know, they lost 40 seniors last year, only had six returning starters. Uh, didn't look like to me they missed missed the beat. Florida probably helped them a little bit more than they should, but I was I was really impressed with with Michigan. I I didn't know going into the year. I thought maybe they might be just slightly overrated. Uh, if anything, I probably underrated them start of the year. Just a couple more questions with the coach, Doug Matthews from 104.5 The Zone, of course, former uh, Tennessee assistant coach. Uh, coach, you look at some of what you know transpired in this first weekend. They, they've been saying all summer that the SEC East is wide open, but it really is. Any number of teams could uh, reach up and grab that. I would give the early edge to Georgia right now, but... You know, you based on what we saw from Vanderbilt, what we saw from Florida, and what we saw from Missouri, Kentucky. I mean, there are a number of teams that could step up and win the East, right? Well, I was very impressed with South Carolina. They played a really good North Carolina State team. I watched all that ball game, uh, and I was very impressed with them. They got a quarterback, too. Yeah. Bentley Young. As a matter of fact, I, I believe 10 of the 14 teams in this league returned starting quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, that extra year, Shermer. Last year, that you know, the, was was a a pretty good quarterback. Looks like he's going to be a real good quarterback. Bentley started about. They brought him out of his red shirt. And started him at the last half of last year. At South Carolina looks really good. The Lock youngster. They're going to score points at Missouri. Uh, it looks like they're going to have a little little hard time slowing people down. But uh, the teams that impressed me the most in the Southeastern Conference were were South Carolina. Uh, you know. Vanderbilt played about like I thought they would. Uh, I thought they were going to be a good team coming in. Tennessee is going to have to get better on defense, but that was a big win down there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, of course, the, the rest of the teams, Alabama's Alabama, no, no change there. But I think so. we're going to be maybe see a few more teams in the middle that are maybe a little bit better this year. Yeah, I just wanted to wrap up, Coach, by asking you about Alabama. Obviously, last but not least, can't talk SEC football without talking about the Crimson Tide. Uh, a very workmanlike win over Florida State to open the season. Reminded me of last year's opener against USC. You know, the, the Trojans hung around for a while, then Alabama was too much for them. Seemed to be the same case against the Seminoles. John, they play such great defense, and that, that keeps them in the game. Uh, and that, you're exactly right. That's what happened in that game. They, 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 you know, they kept, they kept, you know, trying different things on offense. They get a couple of turnovers, and all of a sudden, they they win by what 20 points or so uh, in a game that looked to be a one or a two point game. And that's uh, that's what they do. That's Coach Saban's background. They're going to be really good on defense. Uh, and I do not really see. Maybe I think Auburn's got a chance. Uh, I don't see anybody in the East that you know that really has a, a strong chance. But if you can get down to a one-game deal, you know, in, in Atlanta, that's that's good. But I, I don't see anybody in the West beating them this year. You're going to have to win at least seven ball games and beat them. Mm -hmm. Get in uh, in the West. Uh, I don't know if there's a team out there that can do that. So they're they're still the the team everybody's chasing. No doubt about that. He's the coach, Doug Matthews. You can catch him all weekend on 104.5 The Zone, Saturday mornings for Sports Saturday, Sunday mornings for Big Orange Sunday. Coach, are, are, are you of the Twitter generation? I tried to look you up today, but, you know, Doug Matthews is a pretty common name. I wasn't sure which one was yours. I do not and will not. <laughs> Smart man. Coach, thanks so much for joining us, and, uh, and enjoy the football weekend coming up.
John, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. The great Doug Matthews joining us, talking a little college football. We come back, we'll talk more about the Titans as they get ready for their season opener Sunday against the Oakland Raiders. We'll hear from more of the players as they get their preps underway. Plus your phone calls. You're welcome to join us. 737-7767. Love to hear from you. You can tweet me at NC5 underscore John Burton. We'll get to all that next. Stay with us.